Hey everybody, welcome back to another video at homerecordingmadeeasy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And in this video, this is gonna be video number four of our four video series, Fader Port 16 video. So if you have not seen the first three videos, check the playlist in the description box below. There'll be a link there. You can check out everything from plugging it in, setting it up, updating your firmware, the basic layout, construction, and some basic features and functions. This time out, we're gonna talk about one of my favorite features about using a fader port and that is being able to control your plugin parameters with your hands and not having to use a mouse or a keyboard. But before we get to that, if you like what you see in this video, please consider subscribing. Also hit the notification bell so you know when I post other content. And if this is your first time here, go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. I wanna give you a free mixing course. It's worth a hundred bucks. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I'm gonna give you something else for free. So why wouldn't you? So let's go here into Studio One. So here's our Fader Port 16. Again, this is all the same Fader Port 8. All these functions are the same between this and the Fader Port 8. So let's talk about plug-in control. Really, really cool what you can do here. So I got a session set up here for some examples to show you. So the first thing we wanna do is let's make sure that we're all in our um, mode button up here that we have track lit up blue, right? So we wanna make sure our track mode is here. And if we hit our selection, our channel button over here beneath the jog wheel, we can take our jog wheel and we can scroll through our tracks, right? We saw that in the last couple of videos. Let's come over to track one here where I have three plugins already inserted a PreSonus plugin, as well as two third-party plugins. If I hit this button right underneath the track button called Edit Plugins, I hit this once. Now what's gonna you're gonna see on the scribble strip, which I know you can't read because of the contrast and the lighting in this video, but trust me, because there are three plugins on this track, a Pro EQ, um, a plugin by Slate Digital called Fresh Air, and a plugin by Sound Toys called the Devil Lock, on the scribble strip, it'll show me the track here because I'm Kick Track, which is my track one. It'll show Pro EQ on the first screen, Fresh Air on the second screen, Devil Lock on the third screen. If I press the select button for the first track for the first plugin, you're going to get the Pro EQ and it's going to pop up here. And then what happens is all of the parameters from the Pro EQ are now on the faders, which is really cool. And again, I know you can't read the screen. But here is, for example, our low frequency uh, fader three. And if I move fader three, you'll see the pro EQ, that parameter is now changing, right? If I move fader four, that's the low frequency gain. So this is really, really nice. Here's our low, our low cut frequency here. And if I select that, it'll put a low cut, okay? And then I can go ahead and I can change my low cut. Really, really cool. So you want to highlight with the select button the parameters that you want to change. Here is our mid gain right here. Really nice. You can adjust the Q value, everything. All of the parameters spill out across all of the scribble strip. So if you have a fader port eight, you'll only have eight of these little windows. If there are more than eight parameters like there are on this particular plugin, you can page over um, and you'll be able to see that. Like this one has page one through eight. How do I page over? Okay, there we go. If I use the keys here next to the jog wheel, uh, previous and advanced, I can see up here now I'm on page two to eight, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, there's only parameters on one of the pages. But if the parameters, if there were more than 16 parameters, let's say there were 20 parameters, or if you only have a fader port eight and there's 10 parameters, you would hit the page over button here and that would bring you to the next parameters up on your faders, okay? So that's how you can easily with the uh, with a PreSonus, a stock plugin, it automatically just maps itself. It's really, really cool, okay? Now, in order to close that plugin window, you can do it with your mouse, but why do that if you don't need to? You could come over here to your shift key, hold your shift and hit the macro button, which is the open close button. And now it closes the window, really cool, right? And if I do that again, it'll reopen it again. Really cool, okay? If you look, if you watched the last video where I talked about programming your user keys here, you could program one of your user function keys to open and close floating windows if you wanted to, oops, but I first have to make sure that I'm in track mode. Is that the right button? 
Oh, I got the wrong button. I'm sorry. Forget that. Go back and watch the other video. You can see how that is done. I don't want to screw this up on you. Sorry about that. So anyway, you hold shift, close macro, it'll open and close. It automatically maps itself. Now let's go back. Let's close this. And when we close it, it brings us up to the main level here where now I can see my three plugins. My second plugin is the Fresh Air by Slate Digital. So if I hit select, it's going to open up the Fresh Air. Really cool. Right now, you can see all the faders are down at zero and it's not doing anything. If I move the faders, nothing on the plugin happens. And you say, well, why is that, Dave? It's a third party plugin. It doesn't automatically map. We're going to map the controls to it. It's really, really simple. So you can use your faders. So what you do is you come over to this little cogwheel on the plugin. And there may be many ways to do this, but this is the way I know how to do it. Click the little gear icon. And right here, we're going to go fader port that little triangle fader port 16 and we're going to get our mapping screen here. Try to move these out of the way so you can see them. Now the easy way to do it is to just go ahead and just hit autofill. And now what you'll see is it automatically maps the four controls because this particular plugin only has four controls to the four faders here on, on studio one. So if I move this out of the way a little bit, and if I take the trim, you can see that the trim value here where my cursor is, 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 uh, is changing. Um, we have a bypass high air. If I turned high air, it turns up or mid air. Really cool. Right? So all you have to do is just hit autofill and it will map most of the controls. Now, what if you said, Hey, I have a link button here. What if I want to turn the link on and off? with my fader port. How do I do that, Dave? Great question. So what we can do is we can manually assign this. The way you do that is you want to go ahead and you want to click the link. Okay. And then come over. I think you could do it this way, right? Click link. I hope this is, this is a uh, linkable. Let's see. Oh, turn this on. And maybe not, it may not be because I see when I click here, I don't see it up here in the control area. It only shows, oh, maybe that's because it's an autofill. Let me try this. Nope, same thing. This is not a good example on this plugin. I'm going to show you on the next plugin how to do this. But what you would do is click the parameter that you want, take the little hand up here, left click, and drag it down to the next open button. Whoops, let me do that again. And it may not, it may not let you map the, the link. So this particular plugin won't allow you to do that, but it allows you to do these. Okay. So let's close that and let me show you on the next uh, plugin here. Um, if I were to again, um, close that window. Now I want to go to the devil lock and here's the devil lock. Now, once again, I could click on the gear icon. It's already open. I could come over here, go fader port 16. Now let me see if I can do this manually for you. So if I want to, I want to make sure my track my edit plugins window is open. If I click on, let's say the crush, and now you can see up here, it says crush. If I click on crunch, it'll say crunch up here in the top left-hand corner. I want to say crush, take the hand. I'm going to drag it over to the first button. Now it says crush. Now, if I take the fader and move it, you'll say, well, wait a minute, Dave, the crush, the crush fade, the fader's not moving the crush parameter. Why is that? because you have to link it. And the way you link it is with this little triangle here between these two boxes. See this little, where it says crush and fader 1.1, see that little triangle? If I click that yellow, you'll see now that the word crush comes up in this box down here. See this box down here again, I wanna make sure you guys see this. See where it says crush down here where my cursor is, right? If I click that triangle, it goes away. I wanna link it, that links it. Now if I link it, now you'll see that the crush works on its own. Okay, if I wanna go to crunch, click the crunch, you'll see crunch shows up here in the top left-hand corner, take the hand, drag it down, Got to in, I gotta engage or enable the little link. Oops, sorry. Okay. Why isn't that working? Come on now. There we go, now it works, okay? Now you may say, Dave, why do you do that? Why wouldn't you just use autofill like I did before? Autofill will put them all up here for you. The reason why you may wanna consider that and then you don't have to activate each parameter separately. I could just do this and I can turn these and it all turns all by itself, right? The mix knob is right here, right? 
is let's say you want it, you don't like the order in which these parameters come up across the faders. This one's pretty self-explanatory because you have four controls left to right, four controls left to right on the faders, makes sense. But let's say you have like a channel strip or something where you don't even want all the parameters, you just want, let's say, the threshold and the ratio. And you always want your threshold and your ratios to always come up on the first two faders, no matter what compressor plugin that you use. You don't have to autofill it. You can manually map it so your ratio and your threshold in this example always come up on the first two faders. So you can always remember that regardless of what plugin you open. That would be one reason why maybe you'd want to do that. But most times I just use autofill and it seems to work. And once you learn it once and you map it once, this plugin, you don't have to do it every single time you do a session or every single time you put the plugin on, it will remember for you. Studio One remembers. Let me show you. So I'm going to close these with the mouse. If I remove Devil Lock and I remove the fresh air from this track and then I go back into the browser and put another instance of Devil Lock. And if I go to edit plugins, it comes up on the thing. It comes right up on the screen. And if I were to uh, select uh, is that working? Oh, it's in bypass mode. Is that why? Oh, because we're in bypass, right. Sorry, I was, I was moving the wrong fader. You can't see the scribble strips. The first fader is bypass on and off. So look at the bypass button up here at the top left-hand part of the plugin. I move it all the way up. Oh, it's in bypass. See bypass over here? I'm sorry, it's not over here on the right-hand side. Bypass, if I bring fader one down, it's enabled. So the bypass for this particular plugin is on the first fader. The crush is on the second fader. The third is on the fourth, the mix, okay? So it remembers it from plug-in instance to instance. You only have to do this the first time and then it remembers, okay? Let's close that. Now, if I go to Slate Digital's Fresh Air and put that on, I'll show you that that one will automatically work its, as well. And I won't put it on the first track. Let me put it on the third track. It shouldn't matter what track you put it on. As soon as I put it on the third track, because I have edit plugins open, it automatically does this. And again, I can go here, high air, low air. It works perfectly. The bypass will work. It bypasses and turns it on and off. In this case, it's the power switch down here in the left-hand corner. Okay, and then the trim will work as well. So it doesn't matter if you put it on another track, it doesn't matter how many instances of this you have, once you map it once, it automatically does it. So once again, let me show you once again with another plugin, I'll just grab, uh, uh, let's see, the Slate Digital FG Gray. I'll put it on this collapse track here, okay? I'm gonna go back to track mode. Remember, you always gotta go to edit plugins. It's automatically gonna pop let me close that here. Let me go to, uh, we got to select the channel that it's on. So it's on channel 11. So let me scroll over to channel 11. Oop. Hit our channel button. Okay, here's channel 11. If I go to edit plugins, it'll be up here in the top left-hand corner. It says slate VB, VC, um, VBC gray, FG gray. Hit that, it opens up. Once again, if I open up my little gear wheel, you'll see that it's already mapped because I did it autofill. It's already here. And all my parameters are here. And if I were to take one of these, here's the attack time. You'll see the attack time right here. I'll put it with my mouse so you can see it. The attack time works. The release time works, okay? So it automatically remembers it regardless of what track you put it on, okay? So that's how you map and control your plugins, very cool. Now here's something else that's really cool. Let's say you have multiple plugins on a track. Let me throw this, let me throw another one here on this kick track. So we have three, we have three, uh, we have three uh, tracks here, right? Three, excuse me, three plugins on this track. Let me go back to channel. Okay, so we're over here. I'm gonna hit edit plugins. Okay, and I'm gonna select my channel. Oops, right there. Edit plugins. Why doesn't it show up? Oh, I hate when Studio One does this and it, it, it confuses me. There it is, okay. I had to hit edit plugins twice. Sometimes you have to double hit the button. I don't know if it's because something in the firmware or something in the software is not thinking clearly anyway. If for some reason you don't see it, just hit the edit plugins button again and it works. So here's Pro EQ, Devil Lock, FG Gray, the three plugins that are on here. 
Now, you can open up either one of these. Like I said, I can open the Pro EQ. Now, what happens if I want to go to the second insert, which happens to be the Sound Toys Devil Lock? You have to now hit the edit plugin again to get back to the main screen, then hit the second plugin, hit the edit plugin again, go over to the third plugin and open that. Hit the plug edit plugin button again, and now you can cycle through them. That's one way to do it. That's kind of a pain. What if you wanted to do it a different way? Well, what you can do, as long as the plugin window is in focus, you can use your parameter button here, your little knob up at the top left-hand corner, and you can cycle through the three inserts. See that? And the faders all snap to the parameters that are controlled. So it's faster than hitting the edit plugin menu. It's faster than doing this, although that's pretty quick. All you really have to do is use that knob. See that? So that's an easy way to cycle through all your plugins in your insert bank without having to hit multiple buttons. And again, if you wanna close it, shift, hit the macro button, which is the open close button, and that'll close it. Or you could program one of your user buttons to open and close your plugins. And if I remember, again, I can, I don't remember which one I did that with. Let me just see. I think it was F5. But if I open up my little map screen here, um, where is it? Toggle windows, user button three. So user button three is what it is. So if I close, and I just showed you how to do that in the last video. So if I hold shift, if I hit shift and I use user button three, it opens and closes the last window. See that? So you can close, but you can close plug-in windows or any floating window that way as well. You just need to map it to your soft keys, which I showed you in the last video. Go back and watch that. So that's one way to open and close it. The other way is just to hit the macro button and it'll close it as well. So that's how you control your plugins and map them on your fader port so you don't have to touch a mouse and a keyboard so much. So I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. As I said in the beginning, I wanna give you another free gift for sticking around. So first, once again, go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, get your free mixing course. It's right on that homepage. You can't miss the big orange button. It's a $100 free course, absolutely free, no strings attached. When you take that course, if you really dig my style of teaching and you wanna check out some of my more in-depth paid training courses, I wanna give you 25% discount just for watching this video. Use the coupon code YouTube25 at checkout. That is YouTube25 at checkout. It will take 25% off any one of the training courses on my website. So all the information will be in the description box below as well as uh, the Sweetwater links if you wanna pick yourself up one of the fader ports by PreSonus and full disclosure that it is of an affiliate link. So if you do purchase something with that link, it does help me out here at Home Recording Made Easy and I do appreciate it and you don't pay any more for the product. So I wanna thank you so very much for watching this video and until the next video, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Thank you so very much for watching and I'll see you soon.